We're talking with Jonathan Shaw, the associate head of the Department of Media at the Coventry School of Art and Design, who does some interesting things with open learning and photography. Uh, tell us about Phonar. Okay, yeah, Phonar is uh, one of our open photography classes that we run uh, here in the, the middle of the UK. Uh, it's short, it's the hashtag for photography and narrative. It's a third year undergraduate class on um, one of the, the courses that I oversee in the, the Department of Media. Um, it, it, in a sense, it kind of uh, evolved and came out of this idea that we had a small group of students who were, I suppose, determined not to think beyond the room that they were being taught in. And so what we decided to do is to change that dynamic. So in other words, if you don't know who is in that room when you go to somewhere new, somewhere strange, what happens uh, is you, you, you become very conscious of your character and your personality. If we were trying to get them to think professionally, this meant by uh, sort of opening the doors and introducing the photographic community in, they started thinking differently. What also happened is other conversations, other dialogues were also um, taking place. So it meant people like uh, Professor David Campbell came and joined us, to, uh, spoke about kind of uh, the power and narrative of photography, um, and it really sort of changed things uh, quite dramatically for us uh, in a very good way. So when you said open the doors, how did you do that? Um, we piloted it with another open class that was a second year class called PicBod, which is short for Picturing the Body. Um, and we piloted, ran it through a blog. Um, we made all of our material open. Uh, we sought to share it very much in the, the analogy of a meeting. So as we meet now, uh, 18 years after I first started reading your things, for me to be able to speak to you has taken, let's say, 18 years. If I want to, into, to facilitate that for our students in a different way, we need to enable what's taking place now with digital technologies for our students while they're studying with us. So they don't, let's say, in my case, have to wait 18 years to have a conversation. Um, we ran it through a blog, so technically it's running it through a blog. It's using all of the feeds and the streams um, that the students are naturally using. You know, they are native to all of this. You know, uh, you and I, we've had to learn it. We pick it up as we go along. They're native. So what we're doing is using those streams, but trying to find ways that actually we can join the dots and they become aware of their, their digital profile as opposed to purely using it for social means and social kind of pleasure and engagement. Specifically, how did they do that about becoming aware of their digital profile? Um, well, all of, our, all of our undergraduate students, that's about 600 students now, from the day they arrive, run their own blog. Uh, and we've been doing that for the last three or four years. Directly into these classes, um, we want to encourage them to use it in a critical way. So we use things like Twitter as a way of them kind of uh, providing their notes in preparation for meetings, in preparations for a visiting speaker coming in, somebody who's contributing, or simply in preparation for coming into one of the classes. So in other words, the conversation has started the minute they arrive through the door, rather than them thinking, right, it's half past nine in the morning, they've all been out, it's a Wednesday night, how do we suddenly shake them out of that? We've got an, uh, a conversation at opener before they even come into the room. How do you do that? How do you, what do you tell your students about Twitter, and how do you get them to, to, to start engaging using that? That um, I mean, this, this is where we, we have, a, a, I suppose, a team of us. Um, so my role is I oversee these things, and I work very closely with uh, some fa fantastic colleagues, Matt Johnston and Jonathan Worth, um, who are very much the, the, the front face of this. I'm not necessarily great on the camera. I'm a photographer. I like being behind the camera. Um, but they, we, um, I mean, what we do is the, the material is made available or in, sometimes we kind of have it as a live Skype. So the students during this, uh, this kind of feed or the availability of the material beforehand is um, we hashtag. So we would, this is where the pick bottom phone are come in. So depending on which class they're on, they would hashtag it that. We use things like Storyfy to then aggregate all of those notes. Um, and this is where by having remote students who also take part, so this year, um, for instance, we had th a thousand people sign up for Phonar with a class which has about 20 to 30 students. So the remote students also feed into that. So this conversation, this group of students, this dialogue, this, this critique that we're trying to facilitate or to, cu uh, to curate around a particular topic, uh, a particular context, um, 
is full of stuff before we've even got going. Um, and that, it, it's very, you know, incredibly uh, motivating uh, and stimulating. So a thousand students, and this is a photography class, how do, how do people yep. share their photography uh, with each other at, at that scale? Okay, well, we've got, I mean, um, people engage with it at different levels. Some people like to dip in and out, uh, to follow, and, uh, you know, th this is where we're using kind of uh, tags and categories quite a lot. Uh, we've been able to develop apps. So, in other words, people can dip in and out to the bits of material they want. Uh, we make our tasks available. And so, uh, I suppose one of the things I should have said is the classes run for 10 weeks within the year. So they uh, are on a rolling cycle, and we've just written and proposed the same for a, a new MA in photography as well. So for 10, uh, 10 weeks of the year, they run as live experiences. Outside of that period of time, they exist as a, an ongoing accumulative resource for people to kind of um, pull from, remix, reuse, repurpose. It's great for college uh, lecturers in terms of preparation for their students coming into higher education. Um, Sorry, your question was what again? Well, so the individual that? students have their own blogs and you can pull their photographs from an RSS feed? Yes. Or how do you aggregate all of those photographs? How, do, how are they but, available to each other? Yeah. Um, well, we, we um, feed... So with the apps, we kind of use Twitter, we use Flickr, and we use our blogs and we, we kind of relate into the students' blogs. So with uh, Flickr, for instance, it's all hashtagged, pick, bot, or phone art, depending on which class is running... Um, we also have one generally for the course, which is Cup Hot, short for CU Photography. Um, so by simply hashtagging it, it pulls into our feed. So through the app, uh, it immediately kind of, especially during the periods of the tasks, we're able to set it so that uh, the feed, the gallery that we then see, uh, that we share, that the students can share, the remote students can share, um, is then simply made available from that. So it's not setting up, requesting, putting a gateway in the way that says you have to come through this to be able to join our club. It's simply, if you're involved in this, if you want to associate with these classes, you, you use the, the simple mechanisms of hashtags. Um, but the great thing of that, through both our blog, through the, uh, the, the relevant apps, we can kind of filter it, we can change it. Um, so, for instance, in terms of uh, the sharing and the, and the photography uh, as, a, as an object, as a product itself, PicBot is very much focused on the art, artifact and arcane processes. So we teach through digital media to make the object uh, and understanding that process more valid, more, more, more uh, precious and treasured. Um, so we were able to get Arts Council funding to get a photographer in residence who was there, who offered and shared and opened up his, his, uh, his knowledge and skills of kind of silver gelatin printing, he made that material available online, um, opened up his project. So it's that balance between very much uh, the experiences that we're seeking to facilitate by using digital media almost as the conduit for lots of different kind of ways of doing what we do. You had mentioned uh, configuring buildings, physical buildings. How does that fit in? <laughs> um, it, it's where I kind of don a hat and uh, enjoy uh, hard hats for the last three years. Um, what we found is traditionally uh, universities have that huge rate lecture theatre uh, where the person, the person who knows everything, the knowledge is at the front and then everybody is sat facing them. So in other words, it says you sit there, you listen to what we have to say. If we're interested uh, uh, in my department and as part of the courses that I oversee in changing that mindset, if I go into a room and it's a room which has that dynamic set with it, then... I'm going to just sit and expect to be broadcast out. Um, so what we've done over the last um, three years is seek to change that. So we've got rid of all of those. We've opened the spaces up, um, thought quite hard to, you know, to facilitate a more, something which is flexible. So it means our students maybe have to stack their chairs. And I do remember when we, we did this, they said, but I now have to stack my chair. So I pointed out, do you want to stack a chair and move from one side of the room to another room, or do you want to move within two minutes from one building uh, on the campus to another building, and by the way, you've got two minutes to do that. Um, so what we've done is we've opened the spaces up, so we can use them uh, for more traditional lectures, um, but they're not configured that way. So all of the chairs stack, the tables fold, we can set it up for group, uh, workshops, seminars, 
Um, we've also been able to stop having kind of labs. Traditionally, uh, uh, my university would have with video editing. We would put um, some incredibly expensive, probably spend half a million pounds um, on a video edit suite, which gives us thirty computer stations. So, in other words, I can get thirty people in the room to be sat as we I am in front of this computer, but they can only access it when they come to our building at the point that we deem that they are available for them. So by saying, uh, changing these rooms, it means I've also got to change these labs. By changing those labs, it meant we go mobile. So all of the students who will be coming and joining us from September onwards, so our new crop of students, and as that kind of uh, filters through, will be having a laptop, um, which means they can be mobile and they can work 24 hours a day. Uh, I'm fairly sure your, uh, your working methods and my working methods is, I want to do something and I want to do it now. I need the equipment to enable me to do that. So it's for some students that enables them with tailored software to have, uh, you know, the high end. So we're not dumbing down what they would traditionally get in these uh, in, in these labs. Um, but for students who are really wanting to be engaged and connected, um, they can do it. We, you know, so the Wi-Fi is all increasing. So. This is going to be the first time we do it, so there's lots of, uh, I'm sure I'm going to be facing lots of headaches, but I just think they're going to be super exciting ones to really see what happens. And so through this year, uh, we're going to be working with the students to really try and work out what they like, what works, um, and what doesn't. So when they want to be connected and when we don't. Um, but I think it's also going to have to really raise the game of our lecturers. Um, what do you have in mind next for for pushing the boundaries in the in the, in the future? <laughs> Isn't that enough? Um, no, um, it's a lot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? I mean, we've been able to do quite a lot over the last four years. So we started with photography. Uh, my head of department, who is both supportive of this and, uh, and has really been able to extend and expand this across the department. Um, throughout this year, so rather than it just being in, I suppose, in my area of specialism, photography, this is now very much part of the wider culture of the department. So it's into media and communications, which deals with, uh, it takes more of a media and cultural slant on kind of information and ways of engaging, uh, but also into media production, where our students are normally very technically orientated. So with Pete Woodbridge, um, he's really been able to focus that around creative activism. So in other words, focus of that is have something that you believe in and have something you want to say um, and he works he, he's really uh, interested in working into the P, uh, P2PU kind of a, a initiative that I know some of the people you've been talking with uh, are, are working into too so uh, what else have we been doing so yeah this year we'll have got um, by September we'll have got the two apps launched with them uh, on multi-platform at the moment they are only on Apple um, but we're really keen to push the engagement and that, that, that uh, sense of being able to share, favourite and kind of personalise this information. I mean, each of these classes probably over a year has 300 posts. So imagine coming after the 10-week class into that, it becomes, it's enormous. It, it, it's almost inaccessible because of the content. So what we've been working quite hard on there is the kind of the taxonomy. So in other words, how you can search and find the ability to favourite it, so you know we—that's how we work in 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 this kind of uh, digital age. You know, I want shortcuts, so we're we're looking at that, looking at um, more a range of working with mute publishing in London around kind of um, curated publications which are tailored to the course. So, looking quite a lot, I suppose, at resource-based things and how we can um, both change the experiences. But also change their their access to the resources. So Fantastic! Those, uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Good luck and thank you, Jonathan. Not at all. Thanks, Harriet. It's lovely to meet you. <laughs>